Diarrhea is hereditary. It runs in your genes. Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 action fantasy film called Predators. High above the ground, Royce, an unaware man, is plummeting rapidly. He comes to his senses just in time to deploy his parachute, narrowly escaping crashing through the dense foliage of a jungle and landing hard on the earth, which renders him unconscious. Moments later, he regains consciousness, puzzled about his whereabouts and the circumstances that brought him there. Fortunately, he still possesses his mercenary gear and attire. Suddenly, Trichillo, associated with a Mexican cartel, lands beside him, aiming his arms at Royce. However, before any confrontation, a third individual crashes between them, having met his demise due to a malfunctioning parachute. As they confront this sudden arrival, gunfire erupts. Royce deftly evades the bullets and confronts the shooter, Nikolai, a Russian soldier whose last memory was of combat. Both Royce and Churchillo recall a blinding light that rendered them unconscious before finding themselves airborne. As they regroup, they encounter Isabel, an Israeli sniper, who, like them, is unfamiliar with the jungle environment. She also observed others descending from the sky. They decide to join forces in search of the others. Meanwhile, Hanzo, affiliated with the Yakuza, observes them discreetly. Opting for stealth, he removes his shoes upon encountering mud. Venturing further, the group stumbles upon Stans, a death row prisoner, and Mombasa, a South African rebel, locked in combat. The fight ceases upon the newcomer's arrival, and they agree to unite, recognizing the advantage of numbers. Stans then draws attention to Edwin, a doctor, trapped in a tree by his parachute. Royce aids his descent by shooting the branch, leading to Edwin's fall into a lake. Edwin echoes the group's shared confusion and lack of awareness about their current predicament. While the team progresses, Isabel endures Stan's unsettling and inappropriate remarks. They soon encounter Hanzo motionless in the mud, fixated on an odd totem surrounded by numerous bones. Mombasa remarks that a hunter is likely collecting these as trophies, noting in his culture the most revered warriors are those with impressive trophies. Nikolai speculates they might be undergoing a test, but Isabel counters this, pointing out that not everyone in the group has a military background. Chichillo suggests they're part of a ransom situation, while Stans theorizes it's an experiment. The conversation then shifts to the possibility that they might be in the afterlife, experiencing hell. Royce, however, dismisses these speculations, emphasizing the need to focus on finding an escape route. Following Royce's lead through the jungle, Nikolai is tempted to touch a beautiful flower, but Edwin warns him of its paralyzing toxicity, earning Nikolai's gratitude and a pledge of protection. Further into their journey, Isabel urges Royce to slow down and demonstrates her makeshift compass, which behaves erratically in water. Royce observes that the sun hasn't shifted since their arrival, complicating their navigation. He shares his suspicion that their diverse combat skills, along with Edwin's medical expertise, implied they were intentionally selected. When Isabel hints at Royce's past military experience, he remains tight-lipped. The group later discovers an abandoned cage, covered by a sheet. It's empty, but blood traces suggest it previously contained a creature. Looking around, they notice multiple cages lodged in trees, hinting at more impending challenges. As they proceed, Mombasa accidentally activates a trap, leading to a series of deadly threats. A massive swinging log, falling stakes, and a giant bear trap, which they narrowly evade. Isabel, while fleeing, falls into a pit but clings to the edge, saved just in time by Royce. Using her weapon's scope, she locates the individual responsible for the traps, only to find him deceased. Edwin estimates the body has been decomposing for two weeks, and Nikolai's search reveals the man was formerly a member of the U.S. Special Forces. Royce deduces that the traps were set not for them, but for something far larger, judging by the trap size and placement. As they resume their journey, Mombasa senses a presence in the trees, but chooses to disregard it. Unbeknownst to them, an unseen observer is using infrared technology to monitor and echo their conversations. When the group finally emerges from the jungle, they are stunned to see an alien sky filled with unfamiliar planets and stars, realizing they are not on Earth. Royce resolves to find whoever brought them here and demand a return to Earth. 
Re-entering the jungle, the group is startled as a drone zips past them, causing Stans to panic. He voices his frustration over not having a firearm and confronts Mombasa for one. Their brewing conflict is interrupted by a menacing growl from within the jungle. Suddenly, a terrifying creature charges at them, prompting the group to open fire, swiftly killing it. However, they quickly realize there are more creatures approaching. With limited weaponry, Edwin and Stans flee. As Edwin stumbles, Isabel saves him with a precise shot. Meanwhile, Mikolai and Hanzo take down another creature, and Royce skillfully eliminates one with his knife. Stans, attacked by another monster, fights back until Mombasa intervenes, shooting the creature. Edwin scrambles up a tree for safety, while Isabel, cornered by a beast, contemplates a drastic action. Just then, a whistle echoes through the jungle, and the creatures retreat. Regrouping, they conclude that they are being hunted. The creatures are like hunting dogs testing their prey, and the planet serves as an enormous hunting ground, where beings brought in cages are the prey. Suddenly, they realize Chuchillo is missing. Following his cries for help, they find Chuchillo gravely wounded. Isabel moves to assist, but Royce warns it's a trap, confirmed by tossing a stone. Stans remarks that there's nothing they can do, and the group, despite Isabel's objections, moves on. However, Isabel, choosing to end Chuchillo's suffering, shoots him, only to hear his pleas for help continue. Isabel flees in shock upon discovering that Churchillo had already died, and his voice was merely a recording deployed by the hidden hunter, who continues to observe them. The group marches on, and Royce ponders the limited evidence they have to understand their adversary's tactics. The hunter seems to want them to flee, so Royce suggests tracking the creature's footprints to confront the hunter directly. Soon, they stumble upon a grisly campsite, adorned with the bodies of various species suspended on stakes, alongside remains of different creatures, indicating that Earth is not the only source of the planet's prey. In the camp, they find a monstrous being, known as a predator, bound to a stake. While Isabel reacts strangely to this sight, Nikolai prods the alien with his weapon, triggering a roar from the still-living creature. Isabel urges a swift departure, but they realize Royce has vanished. Abruptly, spears launch, killing Mombasa, prompting Royce to emerge from hiding and open fire. The ensuing barrage reveals their hunter as another cloaked predator. The group flees amid laser fire, explosions and flames, eventually tumbling down a hill and into a river. As they swim to safety, a drone locates them and returns to the camp, revealing the presence of three hunting predators. Once in a cave, Isabel confronts Royce for using them as bait, but Royce stands by his decision, asserting it has given them crucial insights into their pursuer's identity and tactics. Royce then questions Isabel about her reaction to the predator, suspecting her prior knowledge. Isabel confesses she's heard tales of similar alien encounters in Guatemala in 1987, alluding to events from the first movie in the series. Royce proposes creating a defensive zone to trap the predators at a strategic point, and the team agrees to assist. They set up in the jungle, with Isabel spotting movement in the trees through her scope. However, the predators don't engage, leading Royce to suspect they're aware of the traps. Altering their strategy, they use Edwin as a decoy, who lures the enemy into pursuit. Isabel, utilizing her sharpshooting skills, believes she hits the hunter, but upon inspection, they find the fallen figure is not a predator but another caged victim. Isabel's actual shot missed, hitting a tree instead. Amidst this confusion, they hear a voice, and a figure using a cloaking device materializes behind Royce. The stranger, Noland, is not a predator but another human. He warns them to keep quiet to avoid detection by the predators. Noland, who has been observing them since their arrival, invites them to his shelter in a decrepit ship. A former military man, Noland was dropped here ten seasons ago, the sole survivor of his group. He's managed to stay alive by scavenging from both the predators and their prey. His extended isolation has affected him, evident in his conversations with an imaginary companion. Noland shares his insights about the predators, having killed a few himself. He advises hiding their heat signatures to remain undetected and mentions a rivalry between larger and smaller predators, as evidenced by the one they found tied up. 
He explains that each season brings new victims and three predators with evolving technology and tactics. Roy surmises that if predators return every season, there must be a spacecraft nearby. Noland, however, doubts their ability to operate it. Later, as Noland rests, the group engages in conversation. Nico Lai shows Edwin a photo of his children, and Stans reveals a disturbing tattoo of his sister. Hanzo, finding a samurai sword, admires it, revealing his understanding of English. Edwin, curious about Hanzo's silence until now, learns that Hanzo lost fingers as punishment for speaking out of turn. Isabel confides in Royce her belief that they were selected for this alien planet because they were top predators, akin to monsters, on Earth. Royce, however, is fixated on locating the spaceship, hoping to ally with the captive predator at the camp, believing in the principle that the enemy of their enemy could be their ally. Their conversation is interrupted as smoke starts to fill the room, and they realize Noland has disappeared. The exit is blocked leading Edwin to speculate that Noland is trying to eliminate them to take their possessions. Outside, Noland is seen fueling the fire. Royce responds by detonating a bomb against the wall. Though the blast doesn't breach the wall, it succeeds in attracting a nearby predator. Noland, attempting to escape, encounters the predator in the corridor. The predator quickly eliminates Noland with its laser weaponry. The alien then opens a small entry into the room where the group is trapped toying with them. Royce cautiously approaches and fires a flare through the opening, confirming the Predator's absence. The group then pushes through the panel to escape, navigating dark corridors. During their exit, Edwin becomes separated, panicking and drawing the Predator's attention with a flare. Hearing a menacing growl, Edwin flees in terror until he reunites with the group. He pleads for assistance, but the group decides to leave him behind. As the Predator confronts Edwin, Nikolai intervenes, allowing Edwin to escape. Nikolai bravely battles the Predator, but is eventually overpowered and impaled. In a final act of defiance, Nikolai spits in the Predator's face and triggers a detonator, killing both of them in a massive explosion. The group narrowly escapes the shockwave. Outside the ship, Stans exults over their victory against an alien, only to be abruptly attacked by another Predator, now deactivating its cloaking device. As the creature prepares to kill Royce, Stans intervenes, fiercely attacking the Predator and urging the others to flee. Enraged, the Predator overpowers Stans and brutally kills him, extracting his spine in a show of dominance. The Predator's roar catches the attention of a third Predator, which starts tracking the fleeing group. Sensing they're being followed, Hanzo urges his companions to continue without him staying behind to delay their pursuer. He prepares for battle, removing his jacket and drawing his katana, just as the predator confronts him, armed with its own blade. A fierce sword fight ensues. Despite being overpowered at times, Hanzo manages to wound the predator. Their duel reaches a climax with a simultaneous attack, resulting in both combatants collapsing mortally wounded. Elsewhere, Edwin steps into a trap, rendering him immobile. Royce observes that the trap was designed to capture, not kill, making Edwin a liability. As Royce debates whether to abandon or use Edwin as a trap, Edwin presents Nikolai's family photo, pretending it's his own children. Isabel, opposed to leaving Edwin, stays with him, while Royce heads off alone. Royce reaches the camp and negotiates with the captive predator, offering freedom in exchange for a ride off the planet. Upon realizing the Predator understands him, Royce frees it. The Predator momentarily seizes Royce, but then releases him, donning its mask and activating its equipment. It displays a star map, highlighting Earth, and then summons its spaceship, solidifying their agreement. Meanwhile, Isabel, aiding Edwin, inadvertently triggers another trap, entangling them in a net. The third Predator captures them, dragging them back to the camp, where it tosses them into a pit. It then notices the freed predator. The two aliens engage in a fierce battle. Royce seizes this opportunity to sprint towards the spaceship. As the ship ascends, the predators continue fighting, with the pursuing predator ultimately beheading the ship's owner. It then destroys the ship before it can escape. Back in the pit, Isabel, steadfast in her decision to help Edwin, is attacked by him. Edwin, revealing his true nature as a psychopathic killer, 
attempts to murder Isabel with a poison-coated scalpel, preferring to remain on this monstrous planet. Just as he is about to strike, Royce returns, having missed the ship. He aids them out of the pit. Isabel tries to warn Royce about Edwin, but the paralysis from the poison renders her speechless. Moving away from the pit, Royce tends to Isabel. Meanwhile, Edwin attempts a sneak attack on Royce, but Royce quickly counters, using Edwin's own poisoned weapon against him. Then, Royce sets a trap with Edwin's body as bait. As the Predator approaches and touches Edwin, the trap is triggered, setting off grenades. The explosion kills Edwin, ignites a fire, and hurls the Predator away. Recovering from the blast, the Predator finds Royce ready for confrontation. Royce cleverly uses the flames to disrupt the Predator's infrared vision, making it difficult for the alien to track him. Armed with an axe, Royce employs hit-and-run tactics, repeatedly striking the Predator and using the flames as cover. The Predator, adapting to the situation, focuses on detecting Royce's heartbeat. It fires at Royce's hiding spot, injuring him. The alien then starts to overpower Royce, throwing him around. In a critical moment, Isabel, despite her own weakened state, reaches her weapon and fires at the Predator. The creature is wounded but not defeated, retaliating by shooting a dagger into Isabel's shoulder. Seizing the moment of distraction, Royce grabs his axe and fiercely attacks the Predator. He ultimately ends the battle by decapitating the alien. Reuniting with Isabel, they watch as more cages descend from the sky, signifying the arrival of new prey. Royce declares that they need to find a way off the planet soon. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.